How big of a star was Michael Jackson? Let's just put it this way. The day he died, Farrah Fawcett died, and he knocked her right off the headlines. And we know how many, especially male fans that were in junior high in the 1970s, how many Farrah Fawcett fans there were out there. Guilty as charged. Five finger, no discount. <laughs> Sadly, the last chapter of Michael Jackson's career, or life, was the fascination of who he was. His Neverland Ranch was like his own private amusement park for kids and for himself, and it landed him in court a few times. On June 13th, 2005, the verdict came in in one of the lawsuits against Michael Jackson. He was acquitted on all charges. And this is a rare radio recording of the reading of the verdict, which incidentally, as the announcer points out, was not ever videoed or shown, at least not the day it happened might have since but anyhow this was live radio live reading of the verdict and it interrupted the mike trevisano show on wtam in cleveland and again this is june 13th 2005. defenses within those and then count five as you said we already had the count well five. let's on count seven through ten seven again through, yes. with the difference that we've got here is furnishing alcohol to a minor is essentially a misdemeanor, essentially the same thing that, uh, you know, your your son's high school friends come over on graduation day and you give them a beer. That's pretty much That's that. It. That would be a misdemeanor. Okay. But if the jury believes that the accuser was given alcohol to soften him up for being molested, then it's a felony instead of a misdemeanor. Exactly, exactly. So it's a much, it's a, the intent is very different. It's the, the mens rea, if you will, the, the mindset that is so important. You know, uh, if, if, if one is doing it with the intention of softening a child up for a lewd act to follow, that's much more sinister, therefore it's felony. All right, by the way, as we told you, all the attorneys, we told you as they went in, all the attorneys are in court right now. Everybody else who is in this courtroom uh, who is going to get in this courtroom is in it now, uh, except the judge and the jury. They have not entered yet, so that's who we're waiting for at this point as these verdicts are to be read. We're about a half hour after the judge said originally um, he was going to have these verdicts read, but as we told you, there was no way he was going to have these read without Michael Jackson in the courtroom. Michael Jackson is there. All the attorneys are there. As far as we know, we're just waiting for the judge and jury to be ready. There are nine deputies, including a commander and lieutenant, who are inside that court. And again, that is in part to keep order. Because how many has it been, Amanda? Have you been able to count? I think there's been about 40 spectator seats that Jackson supporters have been able to get each day. I think that is about right. There's been also a, sort of a lottery situation where people were fortunate enough sometimes to get in to that courtroom. But it's not a large courtroom, and it's been, for the most part, a very quiet trial. Uh, not nearly the crowds that we're seeing today, of course, at the beginning and the end as bookends. Uh, we've had fans of Michael Jackson. Jackson and of course the media from more than 30 countries around the world coming out for this verdict. ABC coverage, live coverage of the verdict in the Michael Jackson case. It could come down at any moment. And again, I'm not sure how much warning we will have. Those mics will open inside the courtroom and there will be no cameras. You are not missing anything by just having your radio on uh, because we have all the coverage for you and there will only be audio. That is it. We will have that for you. Right here. You're listening to uh, live coverage of the verdict of the Michael Jackson case right here on WTAM 1100 Cleveland. I've got something in my throat. Amanda Grove is with us right now from Court TV explaining uh, what's going on with exclusive analysis for ABC Radio News. Amanda, once the verdicts are read, again, if there is a finding, if he is not guilty across the board, the jury is thanked, and, and that's the end of it. 
Uh, if he is found guilty on anything, what happens from that moment on to Michael Jackson? Well, it Goes really to depends jail. a lot on the judge, but generally what we would expect would be that Michael Jackson, if he is found guilty on one of the counts that constitutes a felony, uh, he would be taken into custody. He would be handcuffed. Well, he would be handcuffed. Yes, and he would be taken out uh, into police custody. And the next day, or the day after, as soon as possible, there would be another bail uh, hearing, pending sentencing, or bail pending appeal, or whatever Thomas Mesereau decides to do. But that generally would not uh, would not avoid his being handcuffed and taken into custody that evening. Um, that's usually what happens, especially when someone has been out on custody, uh, not, uh, out on bail for as long as Michael Jackson has. Um, and then we're going to hear the, you know, there's going to be a pre-sentencing report, and six weeks from the date of the verdict, we'll probably have a formal sentencing. Michael Jackson has said in the past that he doesn't think he could go on living if he did not have access to children. So would you, considering a statement like that, would he be placed in a suicide watch if he is taken into custody, if there is a guilty verdict? I think he absolutely would be. I think anyone looking at him can see that he is just almost a phantom of his former self. He seems physically, mentally. Today, I know we are not able to um, share with the viewer the picture, but I can tell you he looks very, very sort of out of it. He, he, when he came into court to sunlight, he just looks shaken. He is awaiting a verdict that could destroy him, and obviously that shows on his face. He's, he's very stiff. He walks very slowly. He did wave to his fans, but the man is not well. And um, if, in fact, he's found not guilty, he's going to take a long time to recover from this. And if he's found guilty, I, I really think they have to take into account mental health, physical health, and perhaps suicide. All right. Court TV's Amanda Grove providing exclusive analysis for ABC Radio News as we wait for this verdict to be read. Here in Santa Maria, in the Michael Jackson case, the verdict has been in more than an hour now, but it is about to be read in courtroom. We're waiting for the judge and the jury to come in. ABC's Alex Stone is right outside the courthouse, and I imagine out there people are just wondering what's, what's the wait at this point. Yeah, they really are, Gail. It is relatively quiet uh, around the crowd right now after they got very loud when Jackson came in, and we have just learned from the court that... Uh, that there are verdicts on all counts, so this is not a hung jury on any of these counts, uh, which means we're going to hear guilty or not guilty uh, on, on every single one of these ten, and it was a very detailed decision on each of them that had to be made. You had uh, giving alcohol to a minor, whether it was going to be a misdemeanor or a, a felony if they found them guilty, on the child molestation, whether there was what's called substantial sexual conduct on behalf of Michael Jackson if they found them guilty, and then on the conspiracy, they had to decide between between child abduction, false imprisonment, and extortion, if he was guilty of those as well. So a lot of details they had to go over, Gil. All right, and the mood of the court, of the people outside, are they, they chanting, they just waiting? Well, Gil, first of all, the jury is entering the courtroom right now. They are walking in uh, as I speak. Uh, the, the crowd outside, it's a lot of waiting. There are a lot of people taking pictures. There are people here with their children. There are people with strollers. Uh, the police officers have uh, their, their riot gear with them, their helmets, their batons. Uh, some of them were putting it on here a short time ago. But most of the people out here, it is fairly quiet uh, among this crowd as people wait. This has been the life of this town and of Michael Jackson's fans for the last four months of the trial, let alone all the pre-trial hearings and everything. This is a big day in this town. Were you, and I know that they, they get them through pretty quickly. Were you able to see the jury at all in terms and, and anything about expressions or anything at all? No, I wasn't. I did see them this morning going into the courthouse, and uh, we can say that uh, you can't pay attention to the theory that they dress up on verdict day knowing they're going to be on TV because they were in jeans and T-shirts today. Uh, but uh, they, they didn't look unusual at all walking in this morning compared to past days. No, and a couple of them brought their own coffee thermoses, which made it appear that they thought they were in for a uh, for a long day. And well. they could still be, depending on what happens with all the media today. Well, that, that, that's true. Um, the, the jury is seated now, Gil, uh, waiting for Judge Melville to come into the room. So I imagine the judge will be coming in. Judge Melville, and it'll be interesting. We won't be able to see it again. I wonder if we'll be able to hear it in his voice, uh, whether he is um, angry at all. He's a guy who likes to run his court here in Santa Maria on time. Uh, this is now 36 minutes after the judge originally wanted this done. 
be interesting to hear whether uh, he, he has is entering statement. the courtroom right now. So Judge Melville is entering the courthouse. We should have audio from the courtroom and find out these verdicts again within moments. Ten counts against Michael Jackson. And as you heard me talk with Court TV's Amanda Grove just moments ago, there are a number of ways for this to play out. Um, some cases, uh, like the uh, alcohol cases, could be anything from not guilty to a misdemeanor to a felony. Uh, on molestation, there are... Um, it, he can be found not guilty. He can be found guilty without substantial sexual conduct. That would be just basically touching or with substantial sexual contact. That would be masturbation, and that would be uh, more serious. Call for more punishment, more jail time. So even though there's only a 10 counts, there's, there's a multitude of possibilities that could have Michael Jackson serving no time at all being, by being found not guilty, getting probation if, for instance, it was simply misdemeanor alcohol or going to jail for a good long time. And jail, from everybody that we've talked to about Michael Jackson, people who have actually known him, worked with him, especially in the record industry, who knew him, who were more forthcoming than the family in talking about him, say he would have a very hard time if he does end up, if he's found guilty and he ends up at Corcoran, so he'll be very protected. He'll be with people like Charles Manson. Charles Manson, serial killer, now uh, in his 70s. Um, the man who uh, killed um, Bill Cosby's uh, kid is uh, at Corcoran. Uh, we're talking about uh, cells that are 8 by 12. Uh, it's just a, a concrete room with a concrete bed with a mattress on top of it, a sink, a desk, and a toilet. They're allowed to have a small television set if they're willing to buy it for themselves. I would take it. Michael Jackson would be able to do that. And that's about it. It's uh, more pleasant in some ways, the special needs unit, than, than being in with a large prison population, which is very unlikely to happen to Michael Jackson. But it would be a tough life. To give you an example of how tough, in Corcoran, outside of that, that special protective unit, is a prison. The rest of that prison is a place where guards have been accused of staging gladiator fights among inmates, where there's one 118-pound inmate who sued and lost in a lawsuit against the California prison system, saying that he was purposely thrown into a cell with a 220-pound aggressor whose nickname at Corcoran was the Booty Bandit. This is a life that Michael Jackson has not known. And um, again, if found guilty, uh, this, this could be a very difficult time for him. But so that is an if, and ABC's Alex Stone is, again, outside the courthouse right now. And Alex, uh, everybody's in there? Uh, yeah, everybody's in the courtroom right now. A couple of new pieces of information for you, Gil. One is that uh, this verdict is going to be read in numerical order, according to uh, to the court. And we have also just learned that there are EMS crews that, uh, that are standing by on the other side of the courthouse. Uh, these are, and we knew they were going to be here in case there is a medical emergency. We know there are plans at uh, a nearby hospital in case the, this verdict is read and somebody has a, a medical emergency in the courtroom, including whether it's Michael Jackson or his family. That You talk about the state that he is in right now, that if this is a guilty verdict, how will he react? He may have a medical emergency and have to be taken away. There, There is an ambulance and a complete EMS crew and supervisors standing by here at the courthouse. All right, well, Judge Melville is in the courtroom, and the jury is in the courtroom, and everybody is in the courtroom who needs to be there, and so we're just waiting probably for them. I know they were testing the sound system earlier today. Um, that may be what we're waiting for, though, for just the sound system to be turned on so they can get the uh, the verdict read here. We understand it is being read now, according to uh, some people here outside the courthouse. The judge is reading the verdict in silence right now, Gil. So the judge is looking at it, and then when the foreman of, when he asks the foreman of the jury yep. about it, and that is that Hispanic juror, that former uh, community college teacher who was taking all of those notes, filled up about ten books filled with, uh, with notes during the trial, 
Uh, that's whose voice, I take it, we'll hear answering the judge's question about have you reached the verdict and what the verdict is on each of these counts. Yeah, the judge sitting in silence right now, reading over it. He is reading it. Uh, yeah, the, the foreman in this uh, this case is somebody who even our producers said for a long time uh, looked like somebody who would be the, the foreman, 63 years old, uh, has lived in Santa Maria for, I believe, two years, and uh, somebody who seemed to pay a lot of attention through this entire trial and uh, Judge Melville still continuing to review the ballots right now. Yeah, he's the, the second juror, retired teacher from Hancock College, which again is a local community college uh, in the Santa Maria area, who said uh, when he was uh, being questioned to become a juror that Michael Jackson was just another man needing a fair trial. Um, very few challenges, by the way. The Both sides were pretty happy with this jury. There weren't a lot of challenges. They settled upon this jury pretty quickly. And this jury seems, as we said, to have gotten along with one another uh, pretty well and apparently reached a verdict on all of these counts. Uh, and again, if you take away the breaks, 24 hours actually spent deliberating, again, taking away the breaks, uh, on this complex series of charges with as few questions as they seem to ask, is, is almost pretty amazing, Alex. Yeah, it really is. We uh, got this note from the court just before this was announced that there was a verdict that for so long uh, this judge would not say uh, what was going on inside the courtroom. If this uh, jury had been asking questions or not, we knew last Monday they did ask one question. But since then there were rumors, but nothing uh, definite. We did find out that they asked for uh, a readback of some of the accusers, we believe the accusers, but of uh, some testimony last Friday, and that, that was allowed. He did grant that. Uh, the attorneys came, had four conferences about that being uh, re-read from the transcript to this jury. It did happen. And then today they asked a question and then took it back. They decided they did not want to uh, put that into the court, so they, they really uh, effectively did not ask a question uh, at all since Monday, except for the request for a transcript readback on Friday. Okay, if the judge is looking these over right now, then we should be hearing these verdicts here live in Santa Maria, literally in a matter of moments. And as you heard earlier, one of the things that we have been told is they will read these in numeric order. And what that means is the very first verdict we are going to hear is going to be on the conspiracy. The conspiracy charge. This was considered by most legal analysts to be the weakest case against Michael Jackson. Uh, he was never connected directly to the conspiracy. In other words, there's no piece of paper saying, I order these people to be taken out of here and forced to say these things while Michael Jackson. Uh, nobody says, yes, Michael told me to do this with the accuser's family. But, but... There were 28 separate items to this one count alone, and the way the jury instructions... Okay, we are. We now have the verdict from the courtroom. Let's go to the courtroom here in Santa Maria. Let's see. the verdict. Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Santa Barbara, Santa Maria Division. The people of the State of California plaintiff versus Michael Joe Jackson defendant. Case number 1133603, count one, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of conspiracy as charged in count one of the indictment. Dated June 13th, 2005, for person number 80. Count two, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of a lewd act upon a minor child as charged in count two of the indictment, dated June 13, 2005, for person number 80. Count three, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of a lewd act upon a minor child as charged in count three of the indictment, dated June 13, 2005, for person number 80. Count four, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of lewd act upon a minor child as charged in count four of the indictment, dated June 10th, 2005, for person number 80. Count five, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of a lewd act upon a minor child as charged in count five of the indictment, dated June 10th, 2005, for person number 80. Count six, verdict. 
We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of attempting to commit a lewd act upon a minor child as charged in count six of the indictment, dated June 13, 2005, for person number 80. Count seven, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of administra administering an intoxicating agent to assist in the commission of a felony as charged in count seven of the indictment, dated June 13th, 2005, for person number 80. Count seven verdict, lesser offense. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of providing alcoholic beverages to persons under the age of 21, a lesser included offense of that charge in count seven of the indictment, dated June 13th, 2005, for person number 80. Count eight, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of administrate administering an intoxicating agent to assist in the commission of a felony as charged in count eight of the indictment, dated June 13th, 2005, for person number 80. Count eight verdict, lesser offense. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of providing alcoholic beverages to persons under the age of 21, a lesser included offense that charged in count eight of the indictment dated June 13, 2005, for person number 80. Count nine, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of administering an intoxicating agent to assist in the commission of a felony as charged in count nine of the indictment, dated June 10, 2005, for person number 80. Count nine, verdict, lesser offense. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of providing alcoholic beverages to persons under the age of 21, a lesser included offense of that charge in count nine of the indictment, dated June 10th, 2005, for person number 80. Count 10, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of administering an intoxicating agent to assist in the commission of a felony as charged in count 10 of the indictment dated June 10th, 2005, for person number 80. Count 10 verdict, lesser offense. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of providing alcoholic beverages to persons under the age of 21, a lesser included offense of that charge in count 10 of the indictment, dated June 10th, 2005, for person number 80. Not guilty on all counts, all 10 counts. The crowd outside the courthouse right now is uh, definitely, they have received word. They were following along. They, they had radios and phones. All right, all right. We got to play some commercials here. I mean, you know, uh, Michael Jackson uh, pitched a no-hitter there. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw on Cleveland Live Music, make sure to click on the subscribe icon. And Patreon and, and GoFundMe information is, is below as well. Keep it going. Keep it going.